What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. You already know who it is. It's your boy, Kensu, Chip Xanif Extraordinaire, back again with a new video, highlighting a little bit about Chip and my impressions of Chip as of patch 1.10. This video might be a little long, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys and be totally honest. There's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna go over and cover. So if you're interested in Chip, buckle up. There's a lot to talk about. Or you're just generally interested in seeing where he's at now. Again, buckle up. So I kind of want to get into some quick thoughts before I get into this. But before I do, a lot of you guys who are not subscribed to the channel, you tend to watch the content. So do your boy a solid. Hit the uh, subscribe button hit the notification bell to stay up to date with anything and everything happening on this channel. So with the housekeeping things out of the way, let's get into these thoughts. So, you know, Chip has been a big topic for a lot of people in the Guilty Gear Strive community as of recent, basically as of this patch. And to be quite frank, I think it's time that a actual Chip player you exactly what's going on here with him i know a lot of people are concerned whether or not he's good or he's bad but what i can tell you is in my wholehearted honest opinion he's a very good character and has been a very good character since the game's full release there have been some things that have changed but i think it's overall changed for the better because it makes chip a lot more of a consistent character as opposed to a very inconsistent character in patch 1.09, I believed wholeheartedly that while he was good, and he was very good, I did feel he had a lot of inconsistencies more in his combo structure than anything else. His mix-up game, in my honest opinion, prior to this patch was honestly about the same. I know there's a big emphasis on where it's his mix-up, this, that, the other. I can get into big time semantics on this, but the long short of it is Chip is not truly designed in this game in particular to be a mix-up monster like he was in Xrd. And even then in Xrd, there were a lot of nuances to his mix-up that aren't present here, but what Arxis has given the character in regards to mix-up is definitely good for this game. In other words, if you want to play a super, you know, souped up version of a mix-up character, then Milia Rage is right there for you. Chip does not really function in that way. He has mix-up, but it's not it's not anywhere near to the level of like say Milia or even Eno for that matter. It's good, it's solid, it gets the job done and that's where it's gonna be, right? Until Arxis decides to do something more with the character. With that being said, I'm gonna be the first to tell you he is not nerfed. Again, he is not nerfed. He has been adjusted to fit this current balance patch. And to be quite honest with you, he's looking very, very strong. In fact, probably in my honest opinion, even stronger than he was in patch 1.09 prior to this. So with this out the way, I'm going to sit here in training mode. I'm going to show you guys some things. There are a lot of discoveries that I have found, and there are more things to be found about this character. So we're going to do it in steps. So let's cut straight to training mode. Let's talk about these new changes and how Chip has been affected in patch 1.10. So here we are in training mode. And I think the first thing I'm going to want to address here is his kit. And in particular, we're going to start with the one thing everyone is super concerned about, and it is K Alpha Blade, right? K Alpha Blade, in my honest opinion, is not nerfed. A lot of people believe it's nerfed because it's a lot slower now. There were things that it used to do that it does not do anymore. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, to be honest with you guys, right? I don't feel that Alpha Blade's nerfs are as bad as people make it out to be. And it is primarily because of the speeds of the other moves that accompany it. So P Alpha Blade is 29 frames. I believe now the rumor is K Alpha Blade is now like 27 to 28 frames, somewhere in that ballpark. And Leaf Throw is 27 frames in itself, right? So what this means is that all of his mix-ups are technically speaking within reactable range, right? The human eye can see these things and do something about it, right? The truth of the matter is, it's not really the case. Not very many people, in my experience, from what I've been playing since this patch, have reacted to any of these moves at 100%. If they were, then... And 
they are amazing players, they'll never get mixed up by even million, right? This mix up game, in all honesty, is still fine. Uh, a lot of people think it's not good anymore because of the loss of K-Alpha. Prior to this patch, K-Alpha was honestly, I won't even say that it was too strong per se. What I do think was that it is a very, uh, it's a very big crutch. Like you can just do this, hit jump dust, rinse lather, repeat, you know, air dash, do the immediate, and then do it again, rinse lather, repeat, and then you can kind of do this. And this is a very low damage mix up scenario. The good thing is it puts him in a very good position for meat for air, air dash meaties. However, it doesn't, it's not enough to win a game because the biggest thing here is when you fight characters like Soul, Mei, you know, Leo for that matter, a lot of these characters are hitting you and they're doing a lot of damage. Chip still has the ability to left, right you, command grab you, and still throw you all in the same. So he has one more layer or a few more layers to his mix up that the standard characters don't, right? And that's still really good when you think about it, right? While his mix up from K Alpha Blade and his things that come from K Alpha Blade have been adjusted, it's actually okay. Now I'm gonna get into the next thing about K Alpha Blade. K Alpha Blade, now in terms of combos, is a lot better. His combo structure is a lot more consistent. Previously, you know, situations where you would get counter hits, K Alpha Blade was not very reliable for your confirm. And a lot of chip players, including myself, kind of autopiloted into like Calpha Blade for your combos because it's kind of what you're used to doing. And it makes sense. So Arxis readjusted the move and made it so the knockback of the move isn't as far and it allows him to actually confirm a lot easier, right? So what I'm gonna do here really quickly is demonstrate a quick combo in which that is relatively speaking new for chip in this patch. And this is a consistent bread and butter he can rely on now. As you can see, these are some pretty decent combos in which that you can go into that kind of help him out. You know, one here ending with Pialpha Blade opts for a side swap if you want. Obviously you want to take him to the corner, but this is just for combo demonstration purposes if you so need to see what kind of what he's capable of doing. I went on ahead and showed you guys a few combos in which you can kind of go for now and it shows that his combo structure is a lot more consistent, a lot more, a lot more damaging too at that. And all of this is praised because they adjusted the knockback of Crouching Heavy Slash. They didn't adjust the speed, they just adjusted the knockback so that it makes K-Alpha Blade combos way more consistent. Before, in the previous patch, Soul would have been knocked back way further, right? Way, way, way further from where Chip is right now. And the combo structure for K-Alpha Blade from this point would have been way off. It was consistent for what it was if you had a nice clean hit for it. However, now it's way more consistent regardless, right? Now, this also helps adjust the counter hit versions of his combos. So I'm going to set counter hit here to be forced. And a lot of the times before when Chip did counter hit crouching slash into crouching heavy slash, it was a lot harder to get a confirm. You can still confirm, but it was very difficult, especially if you just autopilot it into cavalry, right? Now, with the new adjustment to the counter hits, he has more consistent conversions off counter hit moves into crouching heavy slash. So in this case, a lot of times you'll see counter hit crouching hit slash into heavy slash, but now you get something a lot more consistent. So as you can see, you get stuff that's a lot more consistent. You can do a little bit more in terms of your damage output. So all in all, Chip's overall damage output has been increased due to the new change for K-Alpha Blade. So if anything, the change for K-Alpha Blade has made him way more consistent with his damage output and uh, his corner carry, which is honestly really good because it just allows you to do more. Prior to this, you weren't really getting these kinds of combos. And sure, on one front, it seems like, well, yeah, there's more combos, but mix up, well, to be honest with you, his mix up is more in this position now than it's ever been, and it's better, right? But most importantly is the fact that you're able to even carry them there in the first place. Because before, you know, you weren't really doing stuff like this, right? Let's run off the counter hit for a moment. Before, you were doing more stuff like. 
And while this was good, this is pretty much where you had to stop. You know, and that corner carry from this is pretty much from corner to back to mid screen. Whereas the newer things are gonna carry you to pretty much the other side of the screen. So it makes for his combos to be a lot better, better on corner carry, better for positional advantages, gives you more meter. Like there's a lot of little things that are happening here for Chip that are really good. So now that these things all kind of work together between Crouching Heavy Slash and Alpha Blade, right? Everything is now working together seamlessly now. This makes it so that he's a lot more complete as a character regarding his combo structure as opposed to the way it was before. If they left it the way it was prior to this, he would still just be hitting K-Alpha Blade and you would still have roughly the same... You would have roughly the same-ish combos, but they wouldn't corner carry, you know? So they literally made it so that these two things work in tandem in the long, in the long haul, in addition to making the counter hit scheme better for his combos. So there's so much to be said here. Right now, there's more. I'm gonna go back and take a look at Kalfa again. Right now, there are other aspects of Kalfa that are really strong. Since they adjusted the knockback, they adjusted the knockback on both in the mid screen and in the corner. Right. So, in the corner now, when you're doing frame traps or you're you know pretty much doing pressure, now you're granted a little bit more. Prior to this buff, his biggest damage output was from doing wall run combos. And the wall run combos had a little bit of a requirement to do the biggest of damage, right? So this is essentially the biggest damage you can get off your wall run. And then the second highest you can get, which is the easier combo. So that's the difference in 178 and 194, right? 194 being the highest damage. Of course, when you add things like wrist build, that does change this. So if the opponent has wrist gauge, the damage would be a lot higher. And that's something that's really good about Chip, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Essentially, now you don't have to really rely on that. And now your counter hits are more substantial. And the reason why they're more substantial is because the Alpha Blade and his supers. Specifically, his uh, Bonky Messi, or his Rush Super, if you will. His Rush Super. So his Rush Super doesn't do that much damage, but it's great against the wall. So when you combine that Super with Risk Gauge damage, it's it makes that Super a lot stronger. Um, previously, I did have issues with the Super in the sense that it didn't do that much damage, but essentially what it's really designed for is to take advantage of risk gauge. So if you didn't want your opponent to burst early, you know, in your combos, if you don't want them to burst at all in your combos, then you would opt for that, right? Because the damage output, plus again, the added risk gauge damage makes that super very, very strong. Now, back to K-Alpha Blade and supers and all stuff like that. Basically this corner position essentially buffs everything that he had, right? So now, We'll put Soul to counter attack and basically press like down punch. Okay, set that there. That's gonna be our counter hit, right? Because we're trying to counter hit this this move. I'm gonna set Soul to block. Okay. And our goal here is to counter hit him with a 5H. It's this move here. Right? And we're gonna take the 5H counter hit and we're gonna turn it into damage. Okay. Keep in mind that there is risk build involved here, so underneath Soul's first gauge. Is a little purplish pink. That is the risk gauge. So we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of risk build, and we're gonna increase our damage because of this now, right? So pay attention. So let's examine this and see exactly what we got here. What we what we're seeing here is that. Counter hit schemes are gonna be a lot stronger for Chip, right? So your frame trap game, your stagger pressure game is gonna be a lot more potent in regards to your counter hits. Now there are other things I can show you guys, and I will in a second, but this counter hit game now in the corner is very damaging, right? It was already damaging before, but even more so now that you have the ability to use K-Alpha. Now that's just off of, you know, standing heavy slash, 
So I'll give you guys some other examples so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about and where you can get extra damage in this corner scenario. Let's go back to training mode and take a look at this. So now we're gonna use his Rekkas, or Resho. And we're gonna use this to sneak in more damage here in the same fashion with Kale. This is off Resho single hit. Let's use a second hit. So as you can see here, our counter hit game is a lot stronger. We're getting more damage here. We're basically in a position where our counter hit damage is so much higher because of the combo consistency and things that he's already had. Now, prior to this, he could do this before. However, the double alpha blade did not work. There were other routes in which that you had to go for in terms of your combo structure, which still did work, but this makes his damage output in combo route choices more much it just makes it better it makes it better for the player to decide exactly what they want to do in this scenario you have the option to either opt for the wall run in the same scenario which will do a lot more damage or you can opt for the rekas the resha rokusai if you will and fish for your counter hit damage there you know like the sky is the limit now like you have a lot more choices in the corner and honestly this position here is essentially Chip's win condition. But in 1.09, I would say that this is pretty much where you won the majority of your games as Chip. Now in 1.10, you can win anywhere because of the corner carry, the combo damage potential, and constantly being able to get into your win position at pretty much any given point in time. You know, if you land a clean hit from a close slash or a two slash, right? So his new mix up structure in the corner. It's a bit better from the double K alpha blade, which makes it closer to Guilty Gear Exert, for me in particular, as it was before. And in that game, you were allowed really cool mix-ups from double alpha. And in this scenario, they pretty much gave it back to him and it made his mix-up potential a bit better than it was prior to this current patch. Prior to this current patch, he did have the same style of mix-up, but like, how do I put this? It was the same, right? The mix-up was the same, however, how he got into it is not as good as it is now. A lot of the times, his mix-up before would pretty much make him give up the corner, and you had to do a lot of manual timing for the off-the-wall, or the wall run off-the-wall mix-up, right? Now, it's a lot more consistent to be on whichever side you want it to be based on that knockdown, and you get a lot more out of it, honestly. So in essence, this position is more improved. It's better. It's all, it's all good. There's no other way to explain it other than he's a lot better in that regard too. The neat thing is because of the new combo structure, it leaves Chip in newer positions to where he can make the wall Oki a lot stronger. And not all of it is guaranteed, you know, safe jump. Not all of it is guaranteed meaty. Some of it is designed to, you know, from what I'm learning, some of it is designed to be character specific, Oki. It's not just a one-stop shop, beat everything, you know, set it and forget it, you know, type Oki. There are character specific things in which you will have to do with him in this regard that really help kind of flesh out his game. And it helps in specific matchups for him to deal with other characters as opposed to just, as I said before, set it and forget it is always good. But if every character has an answer for the set it and forget it, it doesn't matter that you have that, right? You will still need things that, that are character specific to them so that when you're doing your mix-up game or your Oki game, it's catered to that character to stop their reversal options or to stop their general options from your Oki, right? Or your mix-up, if you will. Coming back to being consistent, this is where he's being well, more well-rounded in his kit. So essentially, everything that he could do before is even better. And now to make things even more sweeter, and I, won't, I don't really need to show this, you guys can experiment with this on your own, but the new changes to the throws, the new changes to where RC works now, also the change from the uh, the damage proration, aka the damage scaling from RC combos is a lot lower now. 
so it allows Chip to really dish out the damage. It allows him to do a little bit more in the situations. Like if you throw them, you can go into throw RC combos. If you leaf throw them, you can go leaf throw RC combo at any given point. Like the the creativity behind the character is a lot more vast now than it was prior to this because of you know the Roman cancel windows were locked behind a certain timing, right? So now you can do more with it. Like I said before, you guys can experiment with it on your own. I don't really want to get into that too much. That's something you guys can explore on your own time. This is part of your own time too, right? Why you're here. <laughs> but either way it goes, he's better now in that regard. So now the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is where the system helps him and where it really benefits him as of right now. So let's get back into training mode and let's talk about system things that help chip out. There were some things that people were saying that this current system does not benefit chip and Clearly, obviously, I disagree entirely. The, the new system changes actually benefit Chip drastically, and I'll explain why. And before I do, I'll explain one of the major things that have changed in the system that actually is a good thing universally and how it actually does benefit Chip in the long haul. So first, we'll start with FD, Paulus Defense. Paulus Defense was changed to have a set guaranteed distance pushback. And since that's a thing, they also adjusted the extra block stun. So what used to happen prior to this was if you were blocking and you were using false defense, the attacker, even if the move was like, let's say negative two, the attacker while attacking will gain an extra two plus frames on the defender. The notion here is, is that since they were plus, it made it harder to retaliate on top of that the pushback from faultless defense in 1.09 was not very good in comparison to this now, right? So because the FD has more pushback, it helps players create more space instead of being stifled on defense because the lack of pushback for using a system mechanic, right? So this was a drastically good change for everyone in the cast, including Chip, right? So there's also another change I believe that the extended pushback from FD on top of IBFD, which is instant block, false defense, or just guarding, if you will, there's extended pushback now. So how this works for Chip, right, is when you're on defense now, you can rely on both false defense and instant block, false defense to help you deal with things on pressure if you're good at it. Now, only one of these require you to be good at it, and it is false defense or instant false defense, right? False defense in general is just way better now. So you have two choices on your on, on defense, and this is every character in the cast. Now, what this mechanic does for Chip now, it works for everyone else, but I think personally, in my honest opinion, it helps him and the other faster characters. It helps them tremendously. And what this means is that these characters on defense are extremely strong now, so you cannot just run generic offense on them. It does not, it won't work at the higher levels of play. And I think even at the intermediate levels of play, when people start to round out their defense and understand how to defend in the game, that will change a lot of how you're seeing, you know, the defense play out and how these things reward characters like Chip in this game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have Soul do generic block string into Gunflame. And I'm going to show you guys what happens now between using false Defense and using Instant false Defense. So this is what happens, right? Essentially, if you learn how to follow defense, generic block strength. The idea here is that the pushback is really great now. Like there's a lot greater force on the pushback. So it allows you to net better punishes than you could before. Prior to this patch, the pushback wasn't this good, right? So creating more space on defense is gonna be a lot more beneficial for Chip and other faster characters and just every other character in the game, right? Now, what I want to go ahead and do now is take a look at instant block faultless defense, right? Okay, 
so this is an example of what would happen if you did instant faultless defense against soul's generic pressure you get such a large pushback that he can't even swing at you with the standing heavy slash right so this essentially makes it so that they have to be a lot smarter on defense on characters like chip and every other character in the game for that matter so where does this lead us right i'll tell you without doing any other major examples essentially you end up getting a character that is able to get into areas that other characters cannot with the quickness his ability to punish things on block now is a lot greater now right now recovery frames matter big time and now generic pressure won't be as prominent again from the intermediate to the high levels of play because this mechanic now is a lot stronger they've made it a bit easier to get into it is still you know difficult to do but in essence you can say in theory if you can IBFD everything that's important then the punishment on just about any character but in this case as we're talking about chip the punishes for chip are going to be a lot more higher than most characters in the game on the strength of him just being able to get there fast enough to punish their whiff so essentially it's a new way to whiff punish right now this has always been in guilty gear not necessarily ibfd but using all defense to create space to force whiffs on people's generic offense so that you can punish their whiff while this has already been in this drive they're really pushing the envelope with it with how fd works now in the system so there are going to be a ton of punishes that chip only really has access to other characters will have access to it but it will be it may or may not be as good as him does that mean it's bad no it just means chip has access to more punishes that most characters don't and this isn't even on offense this is actually on defense so this is actively being it's basically aggressive defense if you will and that's something that guilty gears kind of always had like an aggressive defense so knowing that you can do this now with chip this opens up a whole new door you know a whole new chapter for this character in this game allowing you to gain punishment in areas where other characters cannot just on the strength of his speed alone this is one of the major reasons why i don't believe that this character is anywhere near nerfed i think that when you put this together you arguably speaking could have i mean if you want to get theoretical i mean essentially he could be the best character in the game on the strength of you being able to punish things like this on defense if you think about it because he's so fast and once again once you learn the things that are substantial to instant block fd then you start to really see where this character can flourish not just on offense but on defense so in essence if you want to get even more technical essentially chip doesn't really have to do anything you can just block and just block everything out and just punish people but the good thing is it's another layer of his game that you can utilize it's no longer just w key forward and just press buttons to wreck us etc etc that's part of his game yes but now they buff his defense so this is a huge change for him and in all honesty i think this is probably the most important change that is not even remotely being looked at it's just where's my mix where's my mix but we're not looking at why he's better systematically versus you know where's my mix so in essence <laughs> i said it like multiple times but i can't stress it up enough you know youtube and chip fans chip players like he's not nerfed at all not even in the slightest he became a more stable character with better defense and the defensive options and the system mechanics truly aid him and keeping him a consistently strong character for this game do i want to place him anywhere in the tier list well i could care less for a tier list right you guys know this i don't really care for the tier list as much i don't want to place him anywhere but i will say in theory he could be he could be you can fill in the blank <laughs> but um the other changes which don't really need much mentioning now but the, the new changes to the jump slash jump dust moves you know those are all huge for him you know being able to do jump heavy into jump dust is really strong you know you get triple overhead essentially um especially at the proper height 
you know the jump slash and all the all the counter changes for the aerial normals to like be like mid counter are good for him i understand and some friends one would say what well, is also bad for him too because if he gets caught in the air well you could say that for any character in the game you know if they get countered in the air then they get this this that and the other you know that's totally fine that's every character in the game chip doesn't have to use his slash normals in the air to rely on getting that counter hit he has other normals that you know fulfill that purpose and it may not go into he has his own combo structure for that is what i'm trying to say so it's totally fine okay so we're we're seeing now where you know we're seeing now where iv iv fd just regular fd has been helping him so that's the flip side you know that's just that's just one side of his actual defensive portion of his game so now of course it also works on the other end right but i'll be the first to tell you that chip overall is very immune to the fd changes and the ibfd changes and i believe it is by design they made him this way to keep him safe in a very high damage game the game is very high damage and yes chip can explode just like any other character in the game right but the way that they made the defense now even with the way his special moves work there's a lot of forward inertia so we're going to take a look at this and i'm going to show you guys exactly what i'm talking about so let's get back into the training mode and let's take a look at this so i'm going to set soul to uh let's set soul soul's already set to 6p so let's set soul to do 6p and we'll use we'll also set him to faultless defense on block and there's some things i want to point out to you guys so chip definitely wants to stay at a specific space to play his game right and this is really good for chip right because he gets to play at a safer space and poke at the opponent and with punish etc etc this is pretty much how you keep your pressure this is pretty much one of the sweet spots of the character right now there are a few things that should be taken into consideration here so on defense yes people can use faultless defense to push him out but the good thing about that is in you pushing him out he gets to stay at a safe space right so what does this what does this actually mean for our opponent right well if they opt to fd that's, that's pretty much typical block string from chip right so we're using close slashes into Rekka's like a full string. Please do me a favor and pay attention to the tension bar underneath Soul down here in the lower right. Look at the gauge and pay attention to what's happening here to the gauge on offense while he's blocking. Chip safely removed all that tension from his gauge in one block string. What does this mean? This means that when the opponent happens to hit you, if they happen to hit you, then they have no tension to roam and cancel to do damage to Chip. Meanwhile, Chip is meter positive and has the ability to do more, right? This is very strong. Alternatively, if we turn our opponent off of Faultless Defense, there's another thing that comes into play here, and it is risk building. So again, underneath the soul's burst gauge, you'll see a pink bar build up. And this is the result of a full block stream with both records. So I'm going to pause it here so we can see how much risk gauge was built. Now, if Chip happens to get this string twice, it'll pretty much be at a red risk gauge. So basically, in two block strings, Chip can build your risk gauge almost to max. Which means the next time he hits you, it's going to hurt. If he just happens to get the clean hit. So, in seeing that, what does this mean, right? This means that our opponent has to make a conscious decision to decide whether or not they want to faultless defense chip out and create space for themselves to play, or to play, you know, the neutral game again, or they block it normally and build their risk gauge. And if anything, this is a uh, very strong. In fact, this is exactly what Soul is doing to people since day one. Building Risk Gauge and eventually getting the hit, and then every character which takes a lot of damage. Chip is doing the exact same thing 
in this fashion and can do it fairly reliably just because of how much risk gauge that his special moves just build up in general specifically his records right or again if you're not familiar with his records Resho Rokusai and the Banzai kick if you will don't use Banzai kick because it's not that good anyway so as you can see here you're you're there's so much going on here in terms of defensive choices for the opponent if chip happens to land offense do you have to do anything extraneous to open up your opponent no in fact one thing you can focus on with chip is building risk on their on their side so that when you do hit them it will hurt right so here's an example of what i mean by risk build and risk build damage i'm going to turn soul off from guarding and what i'm going to do here is we're going to reset this i'm going to do far slash into reckless 71 damage right pretty good we'll turn up the risk gauge to about 50 which is give or take where it was before so 71 damage or so right now let's see what we get with actual risk build 83 damage kind of substantial when you think about it if you were to add a roman cancel or a super to this this would do a lot of damage right and that's a very incremental view right so i'm gonna do crouching slash to super this is a difference in damage right 114 not too bad right for single hit confirm 50 risk gauge is that 114 133 so as you can see risk gauge building is where you can really stack up the damage much like any other character in the game you know, so this is where a lot of chip damage is locked behind, is risk. So if you can build up risk gauge on your opponent, you know, they're going to be nervous and they don't want to get hit by any of that stuff because it's going to do a lot of damage. Going back full swing, this is why he's really strong, right? Because even if they decide to opt to go for using Wallace Defense against you, you can take advantage of that. See what I mean? So you can use the pushback to create the space that you need to whiff punish your opponent. And essentially kill them. You know, because they, 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 they whiffed, they made a mistake. So essentially chip spacing game just got that much better on defense. Now, of course, they're not gonna FD everything out, but let's say that they just so happen to try for that and you're in a good position. You know, because you've taken their meter and your meter positive and you have positional advantage. If they decide to swing, you react and you try to punish, right? If they don't swing and they happen to back up, that's okay too. You just walk forward. See, there's a lot of incremental gains for the character that are not being paid. They're not, they're not being taken note of. And I mean, they can't just air dash and jump at you for free either because he has a really, really strong 6P or 4 punch. So that's just not really, well, it's a thing. It's not that much of a thing. And on top of that, he does have an uppercut. You know, you have a lot of options to kind of like keep your game flowing, right? Because it's not all about doing this, attacking with chip. Sometimes it's just taking your time and just looking at them. We looked at FD and how it works against him. So now let's look at IBFD, right? So this is gonna be the last thing we're gonna take a look at and this is gonna end it here, okay? So we're gonna set them to instant false defense, right? The pushback for Chip here is so great that it's like, wow, I am really far away now, right? Does this work in their favor? Of course it works in their favor. Does it work in Chip's favor? Of course, because guess what? He's safe. He's not in a you know, position to get punished. And you can just stop, which is great. And there we get punished because clearly that was poor timing. And this is what the opponent will be looking for. And this is why I'm showing you guys this. This is the type of thing that they'll be looking for to try to punish. So you have to be a lot more crafty and pay way more attention to how they're approaching defense while playing shit. Now, of course, this is the CPU, IBFD, literally like every button I'm pressing. But the notion is if they're happening to understand how to use that mechanic against you you have to pay attention to essentially punish it again reacting to your opponent's defense and playing it smart around how they're playing so there's a lot of cause and effect there's a lot of things you gotta pay attention to while you're playing chip in this game 
the new system changes these things make it so that again defense is more dynamic offense is more dynamic it's not just rinse and repeat yes you can rinse and repeat in some places but that's only if your opponent allows for that if they're not allowing for that then you have to play a lot smarter around what they're doing regarding that so just so you guys can see again for yourself you know chip he's fine because getting ibfd and pushed out this far is super great for him but sometimes you don't even have to end your strings with records you can just stop so again i can't stress enough you guys there's just so much to look at with him so i think that's gonna wrap it up here for this portion of it so this is pretty much the entirety of the system i mentioned stuff about the rc system you guys can go mess with that on your own i get about to show you really quickly things like this with throws etc etc can like open up other doors for combos and mix-ups and all kinds of cool stuff so yeah that's kind of like <laughs> a short brief into that so let me go ahead and conclude this because this is a long one anyway it goes let's just go ahead and wrap this up Bada boom. All right, guys, so that is essentially the comprehensive overview of Chip in 1.10. I, again, do not think this character is nerfed. I do hope that you guys learned something. I do hope that you guys actually watched it all the way through. It is, it is much like any one of my videos. It will be timestamped so you guys can pay attention and click on, on the areas you want to go back and take a look at. Um, but I really wanted to give you guys a deeper understanding of the character and where this game is going with this patch. I do have other thoughts and things like that I will put out later for 1.10 and my thoughts on the on the current patch, but this is specifically on Chip. And that's for a later date. But yes, he's strong. You just have to be good at understanding the system and utilizing his kit, so forth and so forth. Again, he's not nerfed, he's not nerfed, he's not nerfed. Again, for the last time, he's not nerfed. L2P, learn to play. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Talk to me about how you feel about Chip in the comments below. Let me know how you're feeling. Hopefully you learned something from this. Maybe what I had to say maybe made you feel a bit different about it. So yeah, talk to me, let me know. How you feeling, how you feeling? I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.